Hello everyone, it's Ryan from Ryan Explains. Today we're going to talk about the geocentric and the heliocentric perspectives of the universe. Let's begin with the geocentric perspective. Geocentric means Earth-centered. This perspective took us as being in the center of the universe. We were the center of everything, which made sense. It's a nice and comforting feeling to be the center of everything, right? It's an old idea, though. This idea was an ancient Greek idea that came about from a Greek philosopher and astronomer named Aristotle. Aristotle thought that the world and everything about it was developed from physical laws, and he sought to explain these laws. Aristotle sought to explain these laws using observations and uh, some experimentation. Greek astronomers noticed that the moon, the sun, the other planets, and all of the stars appeared to move around the Earth in a daily and an annual motion. Aristotle believed that everything orbited around a stationary sphere, us. The Earth, in his perspective, was completely stationary. There was no rotation around, around its axis, and there was no revolution around the sun. Instead, we were the center of it all. Aristotle believed that the, all the other planets, the moon, and the sun orbited around Earth daily. He also believed that all of the stars orbited in spheres and shells around the outermost parts of this universe. Specifically, Certain groupings of these stars, known as constellations and asterisms, appeared to move around the Earth. The Greeks named these constellations after gods and goddesses and heroes and villains. Their astronomy was centered around their mythology, which makes sense to why we were in the center. We were the center of their mythology. We humans are the only living things here in the universe. So clearly everything was to be ever up, right? It made sense to them that the world was stationary. You see, after all, if the world was spinning, wouldn't we be spinning too? We, would, we should feel that motion and probably fall down every time we tried to stand up. If we were really moving across the sky in thousands of kilometers per hour, we'd be flown from where we were standing. Aristotle was a well-known philosopher. So when he proposed this idea, People liked it. People liked it because we were in the center, and Aristotle already came up with so many great ideas for them. So, why would he be wrong about this? I mean, after all, we were the center of everything in this model. Everything revolved around us, literally. Only a hundred years after Aristotle, another Greek astronomer proposed a different idea. His name was Aristarchus. He proposed an idea that instead of us being at the center of our universe, the sun was at the center of the universe. People had a lot of quarrels with this idea for the same reasons we just talked about why they liked the geocentric universe. But there was a problem with the geocentric universe that people at the time knew about. And Aristarchus was actually trying to battle this concept. This is the concept of what's called retrograde motion. Retrograde motion is the apparent turning around of a planet as it passes through the sky in its annual path. Like we said, the Greeks thought that the planets orbited around the, the Earth, and they thought they orbited around Earth in perfect circles, which made this retrograde motion very troubling. This motion was noticed from Mars. When Mars appeared to transcend backwards in its path, people wanted answers but they would not give up their geocentric perspective. It was too comforting to have us in the center of everything. It was too comforting to think that we are the reason that everything is here. Instead, a Greco-Egyptian polymath came about named Claudius Ptolemy. Ptolemy was a brilliant mathematician and he proved retrograde motion was possible in the geocentric universe. He proposed that planets orbited on epicycles small circles that worked as sub-orbits as planets orbited around the Earth. This mathematically explained retrograde motion for a while. 
this proposed epicycular motion did not explain the motion forever. Retrograde motion was a problem in the geocentric universe since Aristotle proposed it himself. But it wouldn't be until a millennia and a half later that a Polish born polymath tried to tackle this problem again. Independent of our friend Aristarchus, a new scientist would come about with a brilliant idea. His name was Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus proposed an idea that went directly against the church endorsed theory of geocentricity. This was at a time when the church was the highest power in Europe, which is why Copernicus did not publish his findings until near his death. In a book titled On the Revolutions of Heavenly Bodies. In this book, Copernicus proposed his idea that all the planets orbited the sun and not the earth. He stated that they all orbited in exactly perfect circles. The heliocentric universe, helio coming from Helios, the god of the sun, and centric being centered, it was truly the beginning of a scientific revolution. However, largely for three reasons, his ideas didn't get well known. One, again, the church was so influential and endorsed the opposite theory. Two, that people were already so comfortable with an explanation for the universe that put us safely and firmly at the center. And three, because of the lack of spread of word at the time. It wasn't entirely easy for the book to get published and spread to people willing to hear the idea. Retrograde motion is explained easily and perfectly with the heliocentric perspective. It is simply when one planet that is moving quicker passes a slower planet on their journey around the sun. Not long later, a German astronomer named Johannes Kepler inherited observational data from his boss, Tycho Brahe. Tycho Brahe was a Danish nobleman who had a fascination with astronomy. Brahe had one of the most profound observatories of the time, which was before the telescopes, everything was naked eye observing. He had a series of massive protractor-like devices that allowed him to get the most accurate results on the motions of planets and stars that anyone had ever seen at the time. Tycho Brahe actually formulated his own theory on what lied at the center of the universe. Brahe said that the Earth was at the center of the universe, with the Sun, the Moon, and the stars orbiting it, while the other planets orbited the Sun. His theory supposedly explained retrograde motion, but when Kepler inherited his data, he was unable to corroborate his ideas. Instead, Johannes Kepler came up with three laws of planetary motion. These would become the forefront of astronomy at the time. Kepler said that planets orbited the sun not in perfect circles, but in ellipses, which were ovals or squished circles. He also said that planets orbited faster when they were closer to the sun in their orbit, and slower when they were further away. And lastly, he said that planets further from the sun naturally orbited slower than planets closer in. Kepler's extensive look at Tycho Brahe's observational data took him years to develop these fundamental laws of planetary motion. But these laws are still taught in astronomy today. At the time though, his laws were not convincing enough to everyone. Instead, another astronomer needed to step up and make some observations. But this story begins somewhere else. It begins on the beach where some young boys picked up broken glasses and put them against each other. What they saw was magnification. This magnification was profound. And though they tried to pattern it, they never actually could. But this became the idea for the first spyglass. Seeing the enemy's ships from further away with these spy glasses gave naval supremacy to any country that had them. It wasn't until Galileo pointed a spy glass up 
that we had our first telescope. When Galileo used a spyglass to look at the stars, he noticed two main observational points that would change the perspective of the universe forever. First, he noticed the phases of Venus. Just as we see the phases of the moon, Venus has phases too, caused by the alignment of Earth, the Sun, and Venus. But these phases of Venus would not be possible if Venus orbited the Earth. It would only be possible if it orbited the Sun. Secondly, he detected four moons of another planet. Another world with moons. Another world in the universe that was observationally proven to have things orbiting it. This was a game changer. The people that still believed in the geocentric universe were convinced nothing could orbit anything else. That everything had to orbit the Earth. So, Galileo discovering the four moons of Jupiter, the Galilean moons, would put a twist on the idea of the geocentric universe forever. Let's fast forward a little bit. We've talked a lot about what people thought were the center of the universe for the past couple thousand years now, but let's talk about present day just for a brief moment. We are in fact only one of eight other planets that orbit our sun, and our sun is one of hundreds of billions inside of our galaxy. It wasn't long ago that people thought that our galaxy was the only one there, that the other galaxies we saw from Earth were just nebula contained within our galaxy. But a great debate happened in astronomy. In the 1950s, though, Edwin Hubble proved without a reasonable doubt that these other nebulae were far too far away to be in our galaxy, even by the largest measurements of our galaxy at the time. So our planet is not the only one, our sun is not the only one, our galaxy is not the only one. It's not looking too great for us to be the center of anything, really. Instead, in modern day cosmology, cosmologists don't actually believe there is a center to the universe. I might make another video about that later, but for now, let's end off today by saying that we are certainly not in the center of the universe, and in fact, our sun isn't either. Instead, our sun is one of hundreds of billions within only our own galaxy, which is one of a hundred billion galaxies within the observable universe. Our universe is much more massive than they thought when they came up with these ideas, but there's an important lesson here as well. For the millennia and a half after Aristotle proposed his idea of the geocentric perspective, the scientific community was at a standstill. In this scientific dark ages, there was really no advancement in astronomy almost at all, until some brave astronomers came around and went against the common idea. So keep your minds open to ideas that might sound foreign, because who knows, they could just be the next revolution. All right guys, thanks for watching my video. If you learned something, leave a like. If you wanna learn something else, leave a comment on what that is. If you wanna see more of my videos, which will hopefully be coming out every week or bi-weekly maybe, please feel free to subscribe and even hit the bell icon if you wanna know when I'm gonna post.